Hello and welcome to the next lesson with the Python intro to code. In this session we're going to be looking at using the Turtle module in Python. Now Turtle is a fantastic little environment. It's used for uh, graphic programming really and it's really instruction based. So we essentially have a list of instructions here for so forward, left, back, right, pen up, pen down, set head in and so forth and there's a few others as well. I'm going to be putting a link to some of the instructions on Moodle for you and I'm also going to link to this website which is absolutely fantastic. It's a beginner's guide to Python Turtle and it goes through how to set colors, headings and uh, other things as well on there. Okay, well worth a look. Something's going to be a little bit different in this task. I'm going to give you a pupil booklet as so and essentially there's going to be tasks on the right sorry on the left hand side and then i'm just going to ask you to put your screenshots on the right hand side where it says insert your screenshot here it's not going to be a load of tasks but there's going to be a few in there for you now we're going to use the link here for repel and repel is going to be the editor of choice as we always do because it does have a lovely inbuilt editor now to start the turtle module we have to import it Right, very simple, like you would import a random module or say a sleep module or something like that. All we do is we start by typing import turtle. And that's the first line of code you're gonna write. Now, from here, we can do a number of other things. Now, we can shorten our turtle code by writing a few other bits and bobs but just to get you into the idea of it this is in its basic format what turtle does so we've written uh, turtle dot forward 50. now as you can see on the right hand side it's just produced a little graphic and the turtle has moved forward 50 it's almost like pixels think of it like pixels so it's moved forward 50 places now if we wanted to turn the turtle we can say left 90 and figure that now is like 90 degrees. And let's keep on going. So we're gonna write forward 100 and let's see what that does. Now then, you can see this come up with an error. The reason being I've misspelled forward. So if I just go back and change that, there you are, forward. And what we're gonna do is, there you are. So it's gone forward, it's turned 90, and then it's gone forward again at 100. So you can see, very simply, we can build up a number of different shapes or lines to build something. Now, what we can do is we can shorten our code because obviously you don't want to be typing turtle all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable called t and I'm going to say t equals turtle, open close brackets. Now, what that allows me to do is instead of referring to turtle.forward, turtle.left, I can just refer to it as t dot forward or t dot left and it works in exactly the same way so if i just run this now just to show you so that one line of code we've added in at the top has allowed us to really shorten the amount we have to type right again programming is all about efficiency so we're trying to be as efficient with the code as possible now there's a number of commands which you wouldn't normally use but we are going to use some of them with uh, this module today we're going to use the home command now what the home command will always do is it'll recenter your turtle back to the middle of the screen so if we do t dot home open close bracket watch what happens so you can see my turtle now has gone forward 50 turned it's gone up and then it's just returned back to the home position and the home position is always are going to be the middle part unless you specify where the home is by setting coordinates which you can do now if i just show you this i'm going to show you what happens if i use the pen up command so can you see now i put forward left forward pen up home now i know it's gone very quick there but hopefully you've just caught that so it's gone forward it's turned gone up 100 and then it's returned to home but because we've used the pen up it now hasn't drawn the line so what the pen up actually does think of it like a pen on a page we're telling turtle right take your pen up and then go to the next location now if we want to do we could say then pen down and it'll start drawing again okay but you've got to remember that because obviously it's sequence so we've got to do it in a certain command so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write t dot forward 50 again and we're going to do another left turn and we'll do 90 again then we're going to do another forward so we're going to do 100 and then 
if you notice now what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to copy this and paste it a few times. Because what we are planning on doing is creating a little rectangle. So if we just calculate this, 450, right, 100, about right, left, uh, okay. So this should work. Now let's run this code. Okay, so I've obviously now missed out the last part. Oh, no, I haven't. No, that's fine. So that's now drawn as a rectangle. So as you can see, a rectangle there, if you wanted to manipulate that shape and draw a square, it's relatively easy enough to do. You just change the values here. Now, code efficiency is something that I'm really, really, really big on. And you can see with these, this line here, we could literally put it inside a loop if we wanted to and get it to loop twice. So when you are thinking and you are writing this code, try and write it as efficiently as possible using the least number of lines. It doesn't really matter with our code here because we're not doing thousands of lines of code, but when you are working on really big programs and there's gonna be lots of code, you wanna make it as streamlined as possible. Now I'm gonna show you a cheat that you can use. So we're gonna create a circle, but instead of actually drawing the circle out and then doing it as a loop, I'm just gonna put t.circle90. And as you can see, it's drawn a beautiful circle there with a radius of 90. Perfect. Now you could, if you want to do, do forward, left, forward, left, forward, left, forward, left in such small increments to create the circle. But obviously this is much quicker. So if we do a circle now of 90 and then do a circle of 80, can you see what's happening? So the radius now of 80 is smaller. So we can see it's a circle inside a circle. And if we then were to do something else as an example, so I'm gonna do a loop. So I'm gonna say four I in range, and we're gonna do this 10 times. Okay, so we're gonna loop 10 times. And then I'm gonna put a T dot circle, and I'm gonna use my throwaway um, variable, the I, and we're basically just gonna draw a circle using the I variable. Now this, as you can see, is going smaller and then it's going bigger and bigger and bigger, but it's still quite small to see. And the reason being is obviously the radius there started at zero, then it went to one, then it went to two, then it went to three. So I'm gonna just say I times 10, right? So let's run this and see what happens. So again, it's gone 10, 20, 30, that's 40, that's 50, and it's going bigger and bigger and bigger each time, okay? so. Again, code efficiency, so we've used now uh, a loop there. The reason you probably uh, haven't counted the correct number though, is because think of how multiplication works. So the first uh, variable, or for the first number, i is actually zero. So zero times 10 is still going to be zero. And then it obviously, once it's gone through one loop, it increments to one. So then one times 10 is 10, and that's gonna be our first circle that we're gonna see. Then I will increment one again, so we'll see two times 10 is 20. So then it's gonna go bigger and bigger and bigger all the time, every time it loops until it reaches its final number. The next thing that we're gonna go through is how to add a background color to our sort of page. Now this is fairly, well, relatively straightforward to do. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do it the full way, just in case you don't do the, uh, the shortcut. So I'm gonna put turtle, dot uh, bg color and then i'm gonna in brackets so in speech marks i'm gonna type in a color that i want so i've got blue here now if i just run this you can see it's gonna come up with an error now, the reason it's coming to come up with an error is because of the spelling color is unfortunately with the us spelling is not spelt with a u so don't forget now this is american spelling so get rid of the u in color so it reads bg color Okay, and you can see there, quite simply, it's gone bang, and we've got a blue background. And if you wanted to change any of the colors there, just change it from blue to say green or black or whatever, right? So if you uh, notice, when I've changed that now to t.bg color, it doesn't work. So you've got to use the full turtle name for background color. What I would typically do with those if I'm setting the background color, I normally do that at the top of the program, right? So that really goes at the top. So we've seen how to add a background color. Let's add now something else. So how do we actually change the fill of a 
item. So what we would do is I'm just going to put T the fill color, and then we're going to go with red. Now, what's actually going to happen when I play this is keep an eye on the turtle. I don't know if you just picked that up now, but the center of the turtle now has gone red. Okay, so the fill color now is going to be showing as red. So the turtle itself is obviously changed red. Now this would actually work if we put a sequence of commands in. So um, I'm just going to start now. I'm going to use the words begin fill. Okay. And then I'm going to create a shape. I'm not going to be adventurous in my shape. We're going to do a quick loop. So I'm going to say something like for I in range and uh, let's have a look. We'll do it three. No, we'll do it four times to make a square. So I'm going to say T dot forward. We're going to put fifth, oh, 10 in there. We'll do a small one. Now nah, we'll do 51. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is T dot right. And then we're going to do 90. And then you can see that now it's going to make us a little square. And then what we have to do is tell it to end fill. So I've got T dot end fill. Open close brackets, and then that should be enough. So let's run that, see what happens. So as you've seen there, it draws the shape first, then when it comes to the end, it then fills the color in. Okay, so it basically does the color at the end once it's finished. Now, one other cool little thing you can do is you can change the shape of the turtle. So at the moment, by default, it's an almost like a delta or a little triangle. So if we use the command T dot shape, and then inside uh, brackets put turtle you'll probably notice that the shape now will change to a little turtle which is quite nice um, if you use the link on moodle you can see there's various different shapes you can use but i do like the turtle one there so it's quite nice now the next uh, part of this is going to be to change obviously different colors so if i just give you a really quick demo if we wanted to change say the fill color notice what's happened now i've got red then uh, turtle then white so remember this is a program so it works in instructions so the first instruction was red then straight away we turn it towards white so the white overwrites the red okay so remember now instructions are very important in the order you put it in now this could have worked if we'd made say a red square first then we made a white square then obviously that would have made the red square first then obviously put uh, the white in next that you do have the option to change the line color as well. So to do that, uh, we're going to change, or we're going to use the command pen color. So I'm going to put pen color orange, and I'm just going to get rid of the background color for now. So I'm just going to remove that line of code. Let's run that. And you can see we've now got an orange turtle, and the orange turtle has made a square. Now, the fill color has actually worked. It's white, but if we change that to blue just to show you, there you are. So you can see that works as well, okay? So again, it's all about instructions, all about commands. Now we can change the thickness of this uh, line as well. As you can see, the orange is quite thin. So if you wanted to change the thickness to make it a really thick line, um, or if there's something you're gonna be drawing that needs to stand out a little bit, if you use the command T dot pen size, and then inside the pen size, give it a width. So we're gonna give it a 10. You can see now the line is much thicker, but it's still, it's really easy to see. It fills it in as well with the color that you've chosen. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify my code. So I'm gonna take out my for loop because I don't need it anymore. I'm gonna take the for loop out and I'm gonna create just a circle. So I'm gonna have a t dot circle and then open and close. Um, let's do 90 again and let's run that. Now, I can see now something's gone wrong here, right? There's nothing wrong with my code. There's something wrong with the editor. This does happen now and again. So if this does happen, you can try and stop it and run it. If that doesn't work again, you can see I've still got my square for my last code. If this does happen, all you need to do is refresh the page. But before you refresh it, you have to copy your code. So all I've done is I've selected on my code, right click, copy, and then all I do is I refresh my page because at the moment it's not working. So I'm just going to the top, press and enter, reload. And then once Python is reloaded, I'm then just going to paste my code in like so. And then run. And then it just recompiles it. 
this does happen now and again, and I'm glad it's happened to you so you can actually see. It's not something you've done wrong necessarily. This cord is working, as you can see there now. It's worked beautifully. As we're always looking for efficiency, what we can do is we can start concatenating some of these commands into a single line of code. Now, to do this, it's fairly easy. So we're gonna look at concatenating um, these three at least or maybe four we'll see how we go and we're going to basically put them into sort of one line so to do this you obviously have to add in a new line and then what we're going to do is we're going to start typing so first thing we're going to put is t dot and then if we just do pen and you can see now we're doing pen color remember there's no human color for this so pen color equals and then we're going to say purple and then I'm going to put a comma in as this is basically going to separate things out for me. So I'm doing fill color equals. And again, we use our speech marks blue. And then we're going to do one more uh, pen size equals. And then we'll just do something like 10 again, I think. Now, what we don't need to do is we don't need to put this. Oh, I'll put five in for now. We don't need to put uh, this in brackets, even though it's showing that it's not right. There's something not right about it. This should still work. Now, what this allows us to do, as you've seen, we've taken three lines of code and we condensed it down into one. If you're confident enough with doing this, that's absolutely fine. If you're not, then do it one after the other. That's absolutely fine, no problem at all. And both of them will work fine. So I'm just gonna raise these lines here now, just get rid of them. And um, we're just going to run this to make sure it works. There you are. Okay, so you can see it's drawn a circle with a purple outer and a blue inner. And it's obviously quite thick there, the line. So that's how you would actually add in all of those commands into one simple line. Now, the last thing that we're going to look at is user interaction. What do I mean by user interaction? Well, essentially we're asking the user to tell us how many, say, shapes they want or how many times they want something to loop. So I'm just gonna make a variable here called choice and uh, ignore my uh, red text on the side there. I just paused the video and just tried something out. Um, so I'm gonna do choice equals and then we're gonna do int input and then we're gonna say, uh, how many shapes would you like? or how many shapes there are with short night. So we've got a choice variable, which is gonna be an integer, and we're taking it for an input. So I'm gonna say for I range choice, don't forget it has to be a number. And we're then gonna put some code here just to draw a shape. So I'm just gonna present a few times, go down a few line. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a function. Now the reason I'm doing a function here is just to show you um, how to call a function. So I'm do t dot forward, and then we're gonna do something like 50, and then we'll do uh, a turn, so we'll do t dot left, and then we'll do 90. So this is gonna create a function for me, I'm not forgetting that, because it's a square, we're gonna have to put in a loop, so for I in range four, and then I'm gonna have to indent the uh, t dot forward and t dot left. So this is all very well and good, we've created a function that creates a square, which is quite nice, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna then call that function underneath my uh, choice here. So if I go to the end presenter and then we're just gonna call square open close bracket. Now if you get to this sort of stage and you can see there's a red squiggly line under it, it may be something wrong. Now I can tell you now there is something wrong with this. Um, I don't know if you've spotted it, what's actually wrong. There's nothing wrong with the, the word or the, the terminology that I've used. Um, what I am gonna do is underneath the square that I've just called, I'm just gonna tell it to do a left 180 there so it makes a shape. Now when we play this, what you're gonna find is it's gonna start and then let's have a look and see what it does. So it's rendering now at the moment. How many shapes? Great, that's the first question. So let's put a number in here. So we're gonna go with four, press enter, and it says it doesn't understand the name square, it's not defined. Now the reason for that is the function needs to be at the top of the code. So I'm just gonna move, cut and paste this function in, and we're gonna rerun it. 
how many shapes. So let's do four again. And you can see now it's drawing and it's drawing and drawing and drawing. Now that's all very well and good, um, but obviously it's overlapping. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna change the, um, the rotation of the left hand turn. We're gonna make it so that it will not overlap. So we'll, we'll choose an odd number. So if I do 45 as an example, How many shapes again? So we do four, so that's one, there you are. So you can see that now has drawn four shapes. Now let's say for example, you wanted to make a really peculiar shape. Then all you do is you can either do one of two things. You can either change the degree, the, the rotation that you're doing, or increase the number of shapes. So in this example, I'm gonna do 20. Let me just stop this and restart the program again. I've just changed the left uh, rotation. So if we just add this in now, so 20, you can see now it's adding a really nice little peculiar shape in and it's keeping on going. And because we've got an odd number now with the rotation, so it's 71, every time it's completing, it's obviously turning 71. So it's not gonna be overlapping with much it will overlap eventually if we run it too many times but you can see there now it's created quite a nice uh, shape for us so this is a really quick introduction to turtle there's a lot of things there to help you out as you've seen we've got user inputs we've got functions we've got loops we've got lots of different things we've obviously got variables there as well this is a lovely introduction for you to play around with. Have a good go of the ta with the tasks that I've got on there and please, once you've done them, submit them to Moodle and I will mark them uh, as soon as they've submitted. Best of luck and if you need anything, please, please, please send me a little email. Best of luck.